On tonight's episode, I pat my cat. Steel is turned into gas, and well... It's too small for the hole. Plan is for today, I have the dummy head out again. I've got to whip up a valve guide installer. We've got to drill and ream the head to the correct size. Gonna install a couple of second hand valve guides. Make sure they're at the correct uh, installation depth. And once all this is good, I'm going to move on to the proper head, do the same thing again. I have the proper parts that we need. Um, I have all the valves, I have valve guides, I have springs, I have retainers, all that goodness. Um, so yeah, shout out to Dunedin Yamaha, they gave me a hand with some of it. So we've got to get this head in the mill and yeah, start drilling, boring, reaming, doing all that fun stuff and yeah, over to the lathe as well and start making some tooling. Back from the lathe, I've whipped up our valve guide installer. That is a pretty loose fit, and yes, happy with that. That is done and dusted. Then I decided that I actually needed to make a guide for the drill for the initial pilot hole for where the valve guides are going to go. And so I made this, um, and it took me a couple of attempts, to say the least. Um, and I suppose I spent way too much time on it. Over to the milling machine, going to bolt it down and then we can give the bores a quick clean up to clock them in. And that's about as close as I'm going to get it on a cast surface and yeah I'm pretty happy with that. So I put the boring head back in the milling machine and yeah, dialed in on that hole and I start boring it out and see if we can get it to spec. There we go, boring's all done, and the hole is looking not too bad. There's a few imperfections here and there. Um, and so now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the boring head off, put the collet chuck on, and we're going to get ready to drill the hole for the pilot, for the valve guide. So we're gonna chuck this in, and that should guide it and stop it wiggling around and hopefully keep the drill on center where we want it. And yeah, so let's swap all that stuff out. Call it chuck with our new long drill bit in position and I'm going to chuck this down here, push that in and now I'm going to see if I can drill a hole. And there we go, I have the guide plug out, and yeah, it seemed to do its job, if you can see down in there. Uh, there we go, we have a hole, nice and centered, and hole's going all the way through where we want it. So now to put the bigger drill in. Over to the slowest tool changer in the world. Right, so that's the third drill through, and we have a hole, but, I've just opened my reamer and it's got a Morse taper. I don't have anything to attach this to my milling machine that's got an MT1 in it. All right, so just been down to the machine shop. So we have our reamer, we have adapter number one, we have adapter number two, and so now this should fit in the milling machine. So I'm gonna chuck it in there and hopefully it's running true, we'll put on the dial indicator and uh, see uh, how it's looking. Here we go. That should be at the bottom, straight up. Right. And my mill has decided it wants to be an automatic. You just give the spindle a bit of a jiggle and it changes gear to second. Great. All right, I've gone ahead and done the uh, other side off camera. I didn't quite have the speeds that I would have liked, but I just have to wait and see. I may have to fix the mill myself. Bloody piece of crap. And there we go, I've given the head a bit of a little clean up. 
And as you can see, we have some nice drilled and reamed holes for the intake valve guides. So the next plan is I'm going to chuck some secondhand guides in it because this is the practice head. Um, so yeah, I'm going to chuck the guides in the freezer, going to put the head in the kiln, heat that up to about 120 Celsius, and uh, see how easy these are to install with that tool we made the other day. Oh, ice block. Don't mind if I do. While those things are heating up, I thought I'd show you the barrel, and uh, yeah, I've been working away on the CAD, and it is pretty close to done, I've just got a couple of wee things I've got to do, um, but yeah, otherwise, it's looking pretty good, and as you can see, so that's like the, the layout, it's got a bit of bracing on the inside and everything, and um, yeah, so now the next things I'll have to do is I'll have to modify it to make it um, easier to cast. This is the second or third iteration, I'll show you over here. So I've got the engine dummied up, and so this was the first attempt. Um, and as you can see, I messed up one of the measurements. Uh, that mount didn't line up, I had to cut it to get it to bolt on. And I've got the stock FXR cam chain tension on there. But yeah, I decided in the end that I would actually, it would be a lot lighter to put a, a manual one on. And yeah, so I'm going to quickly dummy this one up and uh, see what it looks like. And there we go, I'm pretty happy with that. This is the first time I've uh, dummied that one up. As you can see, it's got the manual cam chain tension. Hey, 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 hey. Leave the Bonnie. You have no idea how annoying this cat is. Anyway, yeah, so as you can see, the bottom mount as well is lined up. I didn't mess the measurement up twice. Cleaned up all the mating surfaces. and I'm really happy with it, and it should be nice and light. It's a lot lighter than the stock um the stock barrel which is this one here there's obviously a lot of meat on this and it's got the steel sleeve as well um, i haven't decided so i want this to have a nicosil sleeve but i'm going to have to modify the crankcases to get the sleeve to be thick enough on the lip that sticks out into the crankcase because yeah if i have it too thin then it's going to break off and destroy the whole motor so it's either run a steel sleeve like a factory FXR which you can run them a lot thinner because they're stronger or I need to machine out the crankcase to accept the uh, thicker aluminium sleeve which will be nicosil plated which will obviously have better properties for horsepower better thermal expansion it's close to that to the pistons so you can run tighter tolerances obviously aluminium conducts heat a lot better than steel as well so better cooling and aluminium is lighter than steel as well so my plan long term is i'm actually going to make my own cases um but uh, yeah phew, that looks like a big undertaking and i'll be able to make them a lot a lot lighter like there's all this extra material and stuff for things that we don't use on race bikes like starter motors and kick starts and mumbo jumbo like that now that you've had a look at that, I'm pretty happy with it. Let's go head to the garage and the kiln's been cranking away. The freezer should have those grides cold enough, so let's uh, hit them with a hammer and see what happens. There we go, that's our two valve guides installed and they worked out at bang on 16mm thanks to the set depth on our installer tool. And I had a look and checked at the other side as well to see how they look like. Yeah, the installation depth on that side to the surface was about 91mm and I checked that against a um, R6 head with um, the guide still in it. And yeah, it was pretty much the same. Well, here we are. This is uh, as far as I got in today's video. I was planning on making a bit more progress than I did, but that is always the way. Hold ups, things break, things go out of control, um, and yeah, the never ending need for buying more tools. Yeah, so pretty happy with the barrel. Um, it only needs a few more tweaks, and then that's done, and then all I gotta do is, yeah, glue it together, make a mold, and cast it. So that could possibly be the next video I'll be doing some casting again. 
um, but I do want to get onto the cylinder head and actually machine the good head but first I need to nail those practices on the dummy head to make sure everything's going to be all hunky-dory I've ordered another couple uh, machine reamers which are a fly shit smaller than the one I've got because um, yeah it is machining a smidge oversize and I really don't want a valve guide coming out at 12,000 RPM that's not going to be good for anyone's wallet or uh, yeah if they crash uh, their bones my bones yeah I'll be riding it my bones I don't want that no and so yeah on that note this has been Logan from the Motorcycle 4 which I hope you enjoyed and I'll catch you next time <laughs>